good and well. My wife is big on that. Every time somebody she asks somebody how they are and they say good, she says, are you well? <laughs> Grammar Nazi. Um, <laughs> let's see. We are in the book of Hosea. Um, just in case, uh, I guess I'll mention this here, in case anyone is watching um, at home and this is live or even if you're watching the delayed one later if you pull it up and watch it. We're breaking in a new soundboard um, and so there may be a glitch or two along the way. There's kind of a learning curve. We're going from analog to digital and so um, so if, if something doesn't appear right, just give us a chance. <laughs> We're working on it. All right, the study of Hosea, chapter number one. We have now Hosea uh, with his wife um, <laughs> that, he, that God told him to take. And uh, he, we have, last, uh, last week we had the first child that was, uh, that was born. So we have Gomer uh, is, is the wife, and the first child was to be called Jezreel. We went over the reasons for that. Uh, God says, For yet a little while, and I will avenge the blood of Jezreel upon the house of Jehu, and will cause to cease the kingdom of the house of Israel. That was because Jehu, uh, God had instructed Jehu to go in and take care and wipe out the house of Ahab, which he did, but he got a little carried away and wiped out a bunch of other people as well. And God didn't tell, tell him to do that, and so he said he complimented Jehu for the good things he had done, and he said, you're going to get four generations, um, and then uh, Israel is going to go away, basically. So that, takes, that would take us down to Zechariah, uh, the king of, of Israel. And shortly after that, um, they, went into, they went into captivity from Assyria. So that's where we were um, last week. So now we have um, Hosea, we have Gomer, um, and we have the um, Jezreel, son, number one. So in verse number uh, six, says, And she conceived, that is Gomer, and she conceived again and bare a daughter. And God said unto him, Call her name Lo-Ruhamah. For I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel, but I will utterly take them away. But I will have mercy upon the house of Judah, and will save them by the Lord their God, and will not save them by bow, nor by sword, nor by battle, by horses or by horsemen. So we have a, says she conceived again and, and bare a daughter. This, there are disagreements. Um, among the commentators as to whether the daughter that we have here was actually a child of Hosea and Gomer or if Gomer had gone back to work and this was a, a child of whoredoms. You, could, you can kind of substantiate either one. You'll notice that it says in verse number six, she conceived again. When it talks about um, Jezreel, uh, it says that he was the... Um, he was the son of uh, Hosea and Gomer. When it talks about the daughter that comes along, all it says is, and she conceived again. So if you turn over to chapter number 2 and verse 4, when it talks about the, um, the picture, I guess you would say, I will not have mercy upon her children, for they be the children of whoredoms. For their mother hath played the harlot, she that conceived them hath done shamefully. For she said, I will go after my lovers that give me bread and my water, my wool and my flax, mine oil and my drink. Now he's talking about Israel there, but it would be a pretty good type um, if the daughter, the first daughter, was actually not a child of Hosea's. He's talking about Israel playing the harlot. Um, and per so perhaps... Uh, it's just a child of Gomer's and not of Hosea. But Hosea, being the loving husband and father, even though he could have put her away if that were the case, did not do that. The name Loruhama means not pitied. 
that God is not going to have any pity. And so the, um, again, if the child was not Hosea's, uh, the name might fit in a little bit better. So I'm not making a judgment. I'm just saying that that's a possibility, and it would fit in with the prophecy, and it would fit in with what God had to say about Israel, uh, and you can study all of that out and draw your own uh, conclusions. So God is saying that he's not going to have any more mercy upon the house of Israel. So he's, he's not announcing an end to the Abrahamic covenant from Genesis chapter 12, because he promised there that Abraham's children would be as the seas of the shore and all of that. And, um, and so that's not going away, but he is making clear that the terms of the Mosaic covenant are going to be enforced. And so we're going to go look and see uh, what he said. So let's go back to the book of Leviticus, chapter number 26. We're going to read a few verses about what God said when he gave them the law. He says in chapter 26, verse number 1, You shall make you no idols nor graven image, neither rear you up a standing image, neither shall you set up any image of stone in your land to bow down unto it, for I am the Lord your God. So had they violated that? They had violated that. Ye shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. If ye walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them, then I will give you rain in due season, and the land shall yield her increase, and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. Now drop down to verse number 14. He, get, he says all the blessings that they will get if, if they do all those things. Verse number 14 says, But if you will not hearken unto me, and you will not do all these commandments, and if you shall despise my statutes, or if your soul abhor my judgments, so that, so that you will not do all my commandments, but that ye break my covenant, I also will do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror, consumption, the burning ague that shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart, and ye shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat it. And I will set my face against you, and ye shall be slain before your enemies. They that hate you shall reign over you, and ye shall flee when none pursue it. And so we see that uh, God has made some promises that if they don't keep this law, that bad things are going to result, right? And Hosea is telling them that, guess what? Payday has come. And so you're going to reap uh, what you have sown. If you drop down to verse number um, 28, Leviticus 26, verse number 28, it says, Then I will walk contrary unto you, also in fury, and I, even I, will chastise you seven times for your sins. And ye shall eat the flesh of your sons, and the flesh of your daughters shall ye eat. And I will destroy your high places, and cut down your images, and cast your carcasses upon the carcasses of your idols, and my soul shall abhor you. I will make your cities waste, and bring your sanctuaries unto desolation, and I will not smell the savor of your sweet odors. And I will bring the land unto desolation, and your enemies which dwell therein shall be astonished at it. And I will scatter you among the heathen, and I will draw out a sword after you, and your land shall be desolate, and your cities waste. Then shall the land enjoy her Sabbaths, as long as it lieth desolate, and ye be in your enemy's land. Even then shall the land rest and enjoy her Sabbaths. As long as it lieth desolate, it shall rest, because it did not rest in your Sabbaths when ye dwelt upon it. And upon them that are left alive of you, I will send a faintness into their hearts in the lands of their enemies, and the sound of a shaken leaf shall chase them, and they shall flee as fleeing from a sword, and they shall fall when none pursue it. And they shall fall one upon another, as it were, before a sword when none pursueth, and ye shall have no power to stand before your enemies, and ye shall perish among the heathen, and the land of your enemies shall eat you up. So he's talking about falling to Assyria here, but that was he gave this to them when he gave them the law. Right? 
So they should know these things. But it's easy to remember <laughs> the promises of God, right? We all, and we all, we all claim God's promises, and if we're going to study something, we'll study about his promises. But, but when it comes to his judgments, which he also promised at the same time, we're not quite so eager uh, to remember those. We want mercy, uh, but we don't want judgment. But God is a God of judgment and justice and mercy uh, as well. So he warned them. He's warned them for um, over 100 years now uh, from the, the book of Leviticus. He's warned them that these things are going to take place if they do not serve God. And so that's kind of what's happening. If you turn to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 28, and verse number 45. 28's a long chapter, isn't it? Let's see. All right, verse number 45. He says... God says, uh, Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee. Um, in verse number 58, he says, If thou wilt not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, that thou mayest fear this glorious and fearful name, the Lord thy God, then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful, and the plagues of thy seed, even great plagues, and of long continuance, and sore sicknesses, and of long continuance. Moreover, he will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt, which thou wast afraid of, and they shall cleave unto thee. Also every sickness and every plague, which is not written in the book of this law, them will the Lord bring upon thee, until thou be destroyed. And ye shall be left few in number, whereas ye were as the stars of heaven for multitude, because thou wouldest not obey the voice of the Lord thy God. And it shall come to pass that as the Lord rejoiced over you to do you good and to multiply you, so the Lord will rejoice over you to destroy you and to bring you to naught. And ye shall be plucked from off the land, whither thou goest to possess it. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. And among these nations shalt thou find no ease, neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest. But the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart and failing of eyes and sorrow of mind. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, and thou shalt fear day and night, and shall have none assurance of thy life. In the morning thou shalt say, Would God it were even. And at even thou shalt say, Would God it were morning. For the fear of thine heart wherewith thou shalt fear, and for the sight of thine eyes which thou shalt see. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. So that sounds uh, like pretty serious business. Amen. Um, and the children of Israel, being the children of Israel, um, didn't take him all that seriously uh, to, their, uh, to their detriment, right? So that is, the, that is where we are. So Israel is going to suffer this, this punitive act of God's wrath in order to do what? In order to get them to turn around. You know, you read through the Old Testament, what do you find? Time after time after time. God blesses Israel. They fall into idolatry or some other wickedness. God uh, speaks to Israel. They don't listen. God judges Israel. The only thing that will bring them back to himself is judgment. Right? It seems like just talking to them doesn't do any good. Now, does that remind you parents of anything? I mean, we got kids, right? So when you, if you just say, if you, you're, when your kid gets to be about six weeks old or so, and you, and you start saying no, uh, 
What does that mean to them? It doesn't mean anything to them. But when they get just a little older than that, and people say, oh, the kids can't learn very young. No, they can learn really young. They can learn really young. Because no is a very short word. <laughs> and they get to hear it over and over and over again. And the next time when you say no, you take their little hand that they grabbed, whatever they weren't supposed to take, and you slap it like that, and they say, bah! <laughs> and they don't like that. But if you just keep saying no, and you never say anything else, you never do anything else, guess what? You've got a juvenile delinquent on your hands. And that's one of the things wrong with the country today. Say, oh, I don't know what I can do with my kids. I have a belt. You know, we had our very own, uh, we went to Six Flags over Texas one time, and we bought our kids a present. It was a paddle. It looked like a, it looked like a, uh, you know, it looked like an oar. Um, it, was, it was wood, it was shaped like a paddle, and we used it for years. You know, and we would make them go get it. Um, and that has some effect. Is there still going to be disobedience? Absolutely. Why? Because they're just going to press the envelope, you know. They know when it, pretty soon it comes to the fact that they know what's right and wrong, and they're going to do wrong anyway. So when that happens, they expect, somewhere deep down, they expect judgment. All right? They expect it. And if you don't provide it, guess what? They think, oh, man, I can do this. I can get away with it. I know it's wrong, but I'm going to do it anyway because they're not going to do anything about it. God is not like that. God is going to do something about it. He has told them he's going to do something about it. He says, if you keep on in these ways, I'm going to waste you, and I'm going to waste your land, and all of these promises that I made to you, I'm also making you this promise. You're going to rue the day that you decided to go and serve other gods. And he did that over and over uh, in the Old Testament. So they're going to suffer uh, God's wrath in order uh, to affect their repentance. And so after that, uh, he's going to bring them back out of captivity when they uh, repent, and uh, he's going to take them away. You can look at 1 Kings chapter 8 or Zechariah chapter 10, and you will see um, the effects of repentance and God uh, bringing, his, bringing his people back. So this name, uh, Loru Hamath, uh, indicates that Israel is not going to any longer receive mercy from God. He is not going to pity them anymore. Uh, the time for judgment has come. Uh, Peter talks about the long suffering of God in the days of Noah, and, uh, and eventually what happened? Judgment came, right? Uh, and that's the, way, that's the way God works. You know, we would, we would do well to understand in this day of grace in which we live that it doesn't mean that we can just go out and do anything that we well please, you know? Um, part, of that, you know part of the salvation process being born again and you have the spirit of God which talks to you and tells you that God's going to do what he says. <laughs> that's, that's one of the lessons, right? It's one of the lessons we learn from, uh, from scripture. So um, judgment day uh, has arrived and Hosea, once again, God being merciful and gracious, sends Hosea to them uh, to be an example and, and it's, you know, this is not good for Hosea, I mean, in the flesh. Um, Hosea's family is going to be destroyed, basically. But he's going to stick with it. You know why? Because God sticks with it. Remember, Hosea means Jesus. Uh, it's the same name as Jesus and Joshua. Uh, and he's going to provide salvation. But a part of that is going to be you know, unto repentance. And so we have, have, some, have some judgment involved. So he's telling them that, well, I told you these things were going to happen, and guess what? They are going to happen. So they're going to go into captivity into Assyria. He tells them that in Hosea chapter 9, and we'll get there uh, eventually. We'll get there. Um, he tells them that they're going to go into captivity 
and there's going to be no more mercy, no pity. That's what the that's what the daughter's name means. No pity for Israel, he says. But he says, um, I will no more have mercy in verse number six upon the house of Israel, but I will utterly take them away. But verse number seven says, but I will have mercy upon the house of Judah. And will save them by the Lord their God, and will not save them by bow, or by sword, or by battle, or by horses, or by horsemen. What he's referring to there is what we've mentioned before when the angel came and killed, uh, I forget exactly how many thousands of people that were gathered around Jerusalem there. But um, God effected that deliverance uh, for Judah, and they didn't have to fight for it at all. Why did he do that? Because he's God. So they would understand that he was going to do what he said he was going to do, right? He says he was going to deliver them not by bow, nor by sword, nor by battle, nor by horses, nor by horsemen. Um, And so that's that's what he's telling them. So they're going to go uh, into captivity. No more mercy for Israel, but still mercy for Judah for now. Uh, This pronouncement, you would think, might cause Israel to stop and think about you know their relationship to their God. He's uh, and the and the basic reason, and there's lots of reasons that, that we went back and looked, but the basic reason was the calves, right? We mentioned the calves that they put up in Israel so that the people in Israel wouldn't go down to Judah and worship in the temple. The calves were still there all through Jehu, who managed to to get everything done that the Lord wanted him to have done and get all his battles won and all the things that he was supposed to do and wipe out the house of Ahab. When he came back to Israel, he took all the groves down, he did, but the calves stayed. And so he was still worshiping the calves, even though, um, you know, the God was supposed to, they were supposed to get rid of those uh, for the Lord. And so that's what's, that's what's going on there. So verse number eight says, now when, she had weaned Lorohama, she conceived, and bare a son. So she had a son, and God says, call his name lo am I, for ye are, ye are not my people, and I will not be your God. So we see that the word, that the phrase lo there, the part, participle or whatever you want to call it, first part of the word, is the same for both names, and it means not. So the girl's name was not pitied, and the boy's name meant not my people. So now we have a family, and this is Hosea's family. Now, how how they were all brought together is only a matter of conjecture, but at any rate, most people would look at his family and this was, this was God's design. This was so that the rest of Israel would look at Hosea's family and say, that's a mess. Right? I mean, Hosea had to put up with that. That's, you know. Sometimes being a servant of God is not easy. <laughs> and Hosea was going to be an example. And who does Hosea represent? Represents the Father, right? Represents God. And so here, we, here you have God. And you have God's family. And God's family seems to be a mess. Well, that's kind of how it is, isn't it? God's, God's family is a mess. What does that do to God? Well, it makes him sad. God has emotions like we do. We're made in the image of God. And I'm sure that I'm sure that this was in, in all of the service, and Hosea never questioned God that we know of and, and never complained about all of this, and he understood his job, and he understood his business, and he knew that he was set there as an example, but it had to affect him emotionally, did it not? I mean, he's got his wife, and he knew what she was, and then he had the first child, uh, and the first child was basically there and named uh, judgment. And then he has the second child, which he doesn't really know if it's his or not. We don't really know if the third one was his or not. And so when, when Hosea's family sits down to dinner, um, 
They had at the table, number one, they had Jezreel, God scatters. Number two, they had Lo Ruhama, not pity. Number three, they had Lo Ami, not my people. And then they had Hosea, who represents God the Father and salvation, and his wife, Gomer, who is a harlot. And those are the those are the pictures. God says, You are my picture. And all of Israel is going to look at you and see these things. Every time, uh, every time they called their kids, they were reminded of what their names meant. Right? I mean, most every name means something, right? You can look it up in the dictionary or name dictionary or whatever. It'll tell you what they all mean. Um, and and they they all have meanings. And so all of these children have meaning. So the situation of the relationship of, of Hosea is that his wife is a harlot, and the fruit of their relationship is that God scatters them, does not pity them, and says they are not his people. And that's Hosea's family. And so Hosea is reminded of this every time he sees his wife and every time he sees his children. But... They still live under his roof. He still protects them. He still loves them. He still cares for them. But there's going to be some judgment. And that's the picture, uh, that's the picture that he shows. Now notice the first word of verse number 10. After all of this, after all of the judgment, after all of the name calling, after all of the what's going to happen and, and all of this history and all the things that they know, verse number 10 starts out with yet. Yet. Aren't you glad that God is a God of yet? You know, all of this, all of this disobedience going on and all of these people not doing what he wants them to do and all of this, yet God is still there. Still there. So the grace of God, represented by, by Hosea, um, really knows no bounds. Right? I mean, look at all he's putting up with. Look at all that he put up with from his chosen people. You almost wonder if maybe if he could have chosen some different people, they might have been better. Right? Um, but people are people. You know? And. Uh, Someone said once, you always hurt the ones you love, right? Um, and that's, that's part of the relationship issues that God had with Israel. Now, we're told in, in our word of God has to do mostly with God's relationship with his people, with Israel. Was there anything else going on in the world during all, during all of this stuff? There was. And we're not told a whole lot about what's going on in the rest of the world. But we are told in a few places that some of those people in the rest of the world uh, served God the best they knew how, right? Moses' father-in-law is an example. Um, and he, he did good for Moses. And after the children of Israel came out of Egypt, Moses' father-in-law came for a visit, remember? sat down and talked to him and saw Moses judging all the people and said, what are you doing? This is not good. You're going to wear yourself out. And what, what happened? Moses listened. Right. So we don't know how many other things were going on in the world during all of these times, and we don't need to know. Because this is, is, tells us of the relationship between God and his chosen people. So if we are the spiritual children of Abraham, uh, we are God's chosen people. So this is not this should not be foreign to us. This is this is the way uh, this is the way things work. So uh, so the Mosaic covenant has been broken, and God says because of that I'm going to bring those things to pass that I told you 
were going to happen if you uh, disobey. But yet, the Abrahamic covenant is still valid because I promised some things to Abraham. So he says in verse 10, Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea. Who did he promise that to? <coughs> Abraham. So we're going back all the way to the covenant that God made with Abraham. Shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered, and it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living God. Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together and appoint themselves one head, and they shall come up out of the land, for great shall be the day of Jezreel. So God is pointing out to them through Hosea that judgment is going to come, uh, it's time for that. And so, but, but God still has grace. Uh, we'll finish up Romans chapter number 9. <clears throat> Romans chapter 9 and verse 22. What if God... Willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction, that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared unto glory. So God is a God of judgment. God is also a God of mercy. We hope for the second. Right? Um that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy which he hath afore prepared unto glory, even us whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. So we're talking spiritual children of Abraham here. As he also, as he saith also in Osi. Who is Osi? Osi is Hosea. So uh, Paul here letter to the Romans talking about relationships and the example of Hosea and God speaking to Hosea says as he, all, as he saith also in O.C. I will call them my people which were not my people and her beloved which was not beloved and it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them ye are not my people there shall they be called the children of the living God I think we read that didn't we um, so he's just quoting the Old Testament here. So this is how God's covenants work. Scripture says that all Israel shall be saved. Right? Uh, sometime when you figure that all out, you can write a book and I'll read it. Okay? Um, but that's what God says. All Israel shall be saved. Um, and so it also says that Gentiles are going to be what? Grafted in. It also says that Israel is going to be removed for a while and then is going to be restored back into the tree. All right? Who's going to do all that? God's going to do all that. In the meantime, while God is working out all of those things which he said before were going to happen, God's people still have a responsibility toward God. That's what he's trying to show people through the example of Hosea. He said, listen, I'm God. I'm still in control of all of this stuff, but I want you to know that it's going to take a lot of mercy to get you out of yourself. And you know what? That's still true. Isn't it? it takes a lot of God's mercy to get us out of ourselves. Amen. All right, you are dismissed.